We're in Huntsville, Ontario to drive the Refresh Subaru Outback. Beautiful fall colors, new Subaru, let's go. Good thing I got a grab handle. We got the non-turbo. It's a little bit louder on the highway, but sufficient power. Yeah, it's quite surprising. We're going to get into this and the turbo. So about halfway through when we do questions, coffee and cars, we're going to switch from this latest model to the turbo model. So Andrea, the base model, what's under the hood of this thing? A 2.5 liter four cylinder matched to a CVT, 182 horsepower and 176 pound feet of torque, standard all wheel drive. And we will be driving the turbo as well. It's a 2.4 liter four cylinder with 260 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque. Standard all wheel drive and you can put regular fuel in this turbo model. So the Outback, what do you get with it? What are the key standard features? The base trim comes with a seven inch touchscreen, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a 4.2 inch multi information display, cloth upholstery, a power driver seat and a manual passenger seat, heated front seats, a heated steering wheel, LED headlights and LED combination tail lights, 17 inch wheels, a temporary spare tire, and the latest version of EyeSight driver assist technology. All right, Andrea, we're driving on a gravel road right mm -hmm. now. Any special setting we could put it in? What do we need to put it in? You got to put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure you like and subscribe. But most important thing is to hit that notification bell, but also follow on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to get a sneak peek behind the scenes. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto and the links are below the like button. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. We're going a steady speed on the highway and the cabin remains quiet. When you do accelerate, Quickly, you do hear the noise increase a bit. I found at higher speeds, so we're kind of on an intermediate highway, mm -hmm. on sort of an interstate or major highway, I find there's quite a bit more wind noise than I was expecting. Yeah. It might be because of the roof rails we're getting that noise, but something to be uh, conscious of if you're taking one of these for a test drive. Mm -hmm. All right, Andrea, the biggest uh, question out there, is it an SUV mm -hmm. or is it a station wagon? SUV alternative. That's yeah. what Subaru tells us. I think I still like the fact that it started out years ago as a legacy wagon. And you know what? There are no non-premium wagons left. Well, what I love about this Outback is the ground clearance. 8.7 inches. The Wilderness model gets 9.5 inches, but it's so easy to get in and out of this vehicle. So Andrea mentioned that ground clearance, which is so important, and we are driving on a gravel road right now. Now, granted, it's not too hairy, but this yeah. is exactly why people buy these. There's a new trim. It's called the Onyx. In Canada, it only comes with the non-turbo engine, but in the U.S., you can get the turbocharged, and the non-turbo for that trim. So a couple of years ago, they used to have an outdoor model. Mm -hmm. Then they brought out the Wilderness, and this Onyx kind of, kind of replaces that old outdoor model in a way. And I think what's important about this is that it does come with dual function X mode. It has two modes, snow and dirt, and deep snow and mud. So it gets you out of those tricky situations. I think this is really perfect for cottage trails. Um, like I said, it is extremely capable for those pot hold filled roads. But remember though, that X mode is a low speed advanced traction and stability control system. So it works at low kind of crawling speeds. So remember that you're not going to go flying down no. a gravel road and expect to have all of that. It's really when you're crawling along. And the wilderness model also gets this as well. Now let's get into the Onyx trim exterior wise. Um, it has the black accents throughout, black badging and a black gloss grill. The Wilderness model, on the other hand, which comes with the turbocharged engine, 
has some copper accents and comes with smaller wheels, the 17 inch all terrain tires. And this one has 18 inch dark gray wheels. Now the other thing is, this is a mid-cycle refresh for the whole Outback line. So all of them get new grills, new headlamps. Yep. I think the headlamps and the amount of cladding that is in the front has been tamed a little bit. The headlamps I think look really good. Mm -hmm. And all of them have the active turning headlamps, which is kind of cool. But I think the cladding at the front looks a little bit better to me. Yeah, I think even the size of the grill looks better. Also, a keen eye will notice the cladding on the side has been enhanced. It's not quite as exaggerated as the wilderness cladding, which I'm not a fan of, but it's kind of halfway. You're going to write below, do you think they've gone too far with the cladding or could they bring it back a bit? Now, all the models have roof rails, but it's the wilderness model that can hold more weight. You can actually put a pop-up tent on top of the wilderness model when it is not moving. It can hold up up to 700 pounds. Some other updates for 2023 include the latest EyeSight technology, which is EyeSight 4. It has the addition of an electric brake booster and an available wide angle mono camera, which works together with the dual camera EyeSight system and recognizes pedestrians and drivers over a wider area around the vehicle. So that extra lens, basically, the mono camera that has a 100 degree angle is only on the top trim. Yeah. It's probably going to spread to other Subaru models as they go through. So a typical, the stereo cameras that come with all of them is about 60 degrees. This goes out to 100 degrees, which is why it can capture more stuff. There's also the rear view mirror here that has a camera. The camera is now located on the roof antenna and Subaru says that it has aerodynamic textures that keep the water away from the camera so that you have better visibility. Also, the camera in here is clearer now. That's one of the updates. The infotainment system has been improved as well. The HVAC controls on the touch screen. So there's actually quite a few changes for the 2023 model. Also, this is now a connected car. Mm -hmm. There is a SIM card that you get standard in Canada anyway with three years of coverage. So they can do over the air updates. You can also use your app to put the things like ventilated seats on it if the car has it yeah. and uh, auto start. So after the three years is done in Canada, the fee is 179 per year. Yeah. I'm not sure how many people will take that, but probably for the auto start in a cold climate, yeah. there'll be some for sure. I think that's a big one. That's one feature if you're used to it for three years that you would probably want to continue with it. Also includes roadside assistance too. Another feature available in the Outback are ventilated front seats, you never had that before, and USB-C ports which are in the front and the rear, they're also available. And a nice addition is wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on the larger 11.6 inch touchscreen. Unfortunately, that base trim with the smaller screen comes with wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So one up from the base model is where you want to be to get the showbiz screen. Over 11 inches, it's got the hot keys at the bottom for your HVAC controls. They stay on permanently. Yeah. They've integrated things better into the screen, the technology. But also another big one, Andrew mentioned the uh, USB-C cable port there and also a wireless charger. One up from the base, which is pretty good. And other features one up from the base include the sunroof, a hands-free power lift gate, there's also the six speaker audio system and dual zone climate control, which I think is a very important feature. Standard on the limited trim and above includes navigation, the 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, a power passenger seat, wet three words navigation, and the Onyx trim gets heated rear seats, anything above that trim as well. Top trim, ventilated front seats, an apple leather interior, and get this, a single disc CD player in the center armrest. In the United States, you've got a lot of trims and you don't get as many standard features on one up from the base model like we do in Canada. The sunroof is optional, standard on the limited trim. Ventilated front seats are only available on the Turing trims. 
heated rear seats are standard on the Limited and above, and a heated steering wheel. Driver's seat memory and Harman Kardon sound system only available on the Limited and Turing trims. Hands-free power tailgate standard on the Onyx trim and above, and the wireless charger we mentioned is optional, not standard on any trim. So there's a variety of options when it comes to upholstery. You get cloth for the base model, and then this Onyx trim that we're in, as well as the Wilderness, gets a soft touch all-weather material. You can get leather interior, and then the top trim, Napa leather. And also on this trim, the Onyx trim, they've gone with standard rubber floor mats. And mm. in the back, uh, on most trims in Canada anyway, you get the rubber mat, which is something that people want to buy anyway. I think it's great that they include that with most trims. And I also like how they've gone with different stitching. Like this Onyx trim has green stitching, other trims get white, and then the Wilderness orange. The one thing I will say about Subaru, and it might not come across and camera but the touch points the padding on the dash the doors the seats you can see the seats are really quite heavily bolstered yeah. they put a lot of effort into their interiors years ago this was a criticism of Subaru they've turned things around these are some of the nicest interiors in this class I really like the comfort level in here and how I'm sitting a little bit up and over the dash it just feels really open the visibility is excellent and I get why people like the Outback when it comes when it comes to front row leg room, this is very spacious, but the Forester and the Nissan Rogue actually offer more front row leg room. But is this a wagon or is this an <laughs> SUV? That's the whole question. Yeah. When you get into the back seat, it's really easy to get into. It feels more like a sedan to me yeah. or a station wagon. Uh, the seats are quite roomy, good leg room, good headroom. Second row leg room keeps up with the competition, but the Tucson Sportage and the new CRV offer more. Now the cargo area is why people buy this over maybe a Forester, because it is really essentially based on a station wagon platform. Yeah. You get a longer cargo area and it's easy to load things like dogs in there and I think it's a real favorite a lot of people and I think that's the key this is longer than the Forester so you really see it when all the seats are folded down the only other vehicle that offers more overall cargo space is the new CRV mm, there you go mm -hmm. you know what Andrea major omission on our part we didn't, <laughs> didn't get any coffee but anyway oh shoot all right let's get at it Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Not a coffee. We found a water in the door. At least something to drink, right? All right. Your questions from Instagram. Can you please mention the car seat situation in your videos? How many latch connectors and how many tether anchors in each row? So what we'll do is we will add this to the part when Zach is sitting in the second row seat to our videos moving forward. So this one you checked. Yep. So there's uh, on the outboard seats in the rear, there are latches for two seats on the outboard right by the doors but you can get a third car seat tethered over the back so there's three tether points two latches will there be a heated steering wheel option for u.s customers now in the onyx and wilderness trim levels also will wilderness trims get the refreshed exterior unfortunately not that heated steering wheel is just available on limited and touring models but here in canada the heated steering wheel is standard because it's cold in canada eh? uh, the other thing is all of them get the refresh they all get the new headlamps and the new look so yeah every trim yeah have really liked these in the outback form are they available in a manual transmission still unfortunately not but but you can get the cross track with the manual transmission. It's smaller, but at least you can still get it. Forrester used to have a manual. They got rid of that. Forrester used to have a turbo. They got rid of that. But the good news is this has a turbo, no manual. But uh, yeah, I think that's really the only drawback for someone who drives manual. But hmm. there's not many of you out there because you didn't buy them. No, which is why they got rid of them. Exactly. We put out a lot of content each week on the Motormouth YouTube channel and it's so easy to find. All you do is go to the YouTube search bar and type in Motormouth, the name of the channel, then the brand you're looking for. In this case, it's Subaru and all of our videos pop up. It's that easy. Do they offer a 360 view camera system with that huge infotainment screen yet? They do not. There mm. is no 360 camera, but there are three cameras. Depends on the trim you get. Some have the forward-facing camera mm -hmm. um, that you can put on the screen, like the Wilderness trim has that. That's for going off-roading, going over crests of hills and things like that, but not all of them. No, not all of them have it.
And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? How is the 2.5 liter versus the turbo 2.4? The 2.5 liter felt underpowered when I took the car for a test drive last year. Has there been any changes? Turbocharged unit. Big difference. And also the mimic steps in the continuously variable transmission yeah. make this really the one you want if you can afford it. I think that base engine, we've been driving it actually more today than this turbo, yeah. and it's fine. Like if you're not somebody that cares too much about that stuff, yeah. but if you do, you want the turbo. Yeah, I would say the non-turbo is sufficient. I mean, you can get where you need to go, no problem. On the highway, it's gonna work a little bit harder cabin's going to get a little bit louder when you're accelerating quickly. But this just has a lot more power. The torque figure on this is 277 pound feet compared to the non-turbo with 176. But I've talked to some followers and viewers and they'll say to me, Andrea, I don't need all that power. This is good enough and I don't want to make the stretch one up from the base model, let's say, with all those extra features, it'll cost you $6,000 more. If you don't like the wilderness model, which mm -hmm. has the turbocharged engine, that's yeah. the first trim, right? The, the problem with the wilderness trim is that it's got the, all the goofy cladding on it. I just don't like the look of it. It, it, look, it sits up too high in its wheels. It's not for me. Uh, I would want the limited, I think, yeah. or this, what's it called? Premier? The, Premier. the, the one yeah. that we're driving right now with the beautiful Napa leather. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? It all comes down to what you can afford, but the turbo is fantastic because the turbo spools up and compensates for that CVT-ness. Totally. And you, you forget. It's really, it's the one to buy. Actually, sometimes you're in this and you think to yourself, for those who don't enjoy a CVT, you will probably drive this and say, does it have a CVT? Whereas the non-turbo, you can definitely tell that the engine is matched to a CVT. So and it's all about priorities, right? Okay, so if you what do, do you a, lot of, a lot of highway driving, passing on the highway with the base engine, it's a bit of planning goes into that. Mm -hmm. And as Andrea mentioned, and a bit noisier. This one, you just boom, you go by. And one great thing about this Premier trim for 2023 is now you can get the black Napa leather interior, mm -hmm. where the 2022 model just has the brown interior. So That's you got an good. option there. I like choices. Mm -hmm. I like the engine choices. I like the color choices, except the wilderness. Uh, all right, we're going to get into the fuel economy, the warranty, and more in our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. We'll do Canada first, and then we'll move on to the U.S. The 2.5 liter four cylinder starts at just over thirty-two and a half thousand dollars Canadian. The 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder starts at just over $43,000. In the US, the 2.5 liter four cylinder starts at just over $28,000. And the 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder starts at just over $38,500. Here's the fuel economy for the base engine 9.2 liters per 100 kilometer city, 7.3 on the highway. That's 26 miles per gallon city, 32 miles per gallon highway. The turbocharged engine is rated at 10.6 liters per 100 kilometer city, 8.1 on the highway. That's 22 miles per gallon city, 29 miles per gallon highway. With the base engine, you can tow 2,700 pounds. With the turbocharged unit, 3,500 pounds. The warranty is three years, 60,000 kilometers, or 36,000 miles. So Andrea, I don't think this really has a direct competitor no. because of its station wagginess, if that's a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we've gone with some other crossovers. Mm -hmm. For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Mazda CX-50. It has a 2.5 liter four cylinder with 187 horsepower and up to 8.6 inches of ground clearance. It starts at just under $38,000. The Honda CRV with a 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder engine with 190 horsepower and 7.8 inches of ground clearance it has an all-wheel drive starting price of $37,500. The Toyota RAV4 has a 2.5 liter four-cylinder with 203 horsepower and 8.6 inches of ground clearance. It starts at just over $31,000 for all-wheel drive. The Ford Bronco Sport with a 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine, 181 horsepower, but 8.8 .8 inches of ground clearance, and it starts at $36,000. So there are four vehicles for you to consider. 
Lightning round. Two things we like, two things we like to see improve. I really like the addition of this new Onyx trim. I think it looks cool. I love the fact that Subaru's sticking with the wagon format. What I'd like to see is a plug-in hybrid option or a hybrid option for this Outback. And I like the big screen on all trims, not just one up from the base. This Outback is so capable. If you've got some tough road conditions daily, this is tough to beat. I love a wagon. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.